and welcome to the Hawk's Nest Film Breakdowns. My name is Brandon, of course, and I appreciate you for watching, tuning on in. Well, today I figured we'd go into some of the tackles in this draft that I think Seattle might potentially target early on, of course, in that second round. Now, we've got to toss out a lot of these frontline guys, okay? We don't get any luxury item tackles in this draft, okay? No, no freaks of nature. So we can't look at the luxury cars. We got to look at the secondhand models a little bit. You know, we're not getting the Mercedes, but we can still go out there and get a nice Honda, okay? Or Toyota. Um, maybe the best of Honda and Toyota. <laughs> so today we're going to be looking at these tackles. We've got to remove some of the top guys off the board because it doesn't make any sense to consider them because Seattle's not going to be in a position to be able to, to select them. So why consider them? They're great players in themselves. They've earned the right of being a first round and graded players. I think all of them will be pretty good players. I don't see any busts of the top end tackles. Their lowest end should be pretty dang solid. But we've got to remove, of course, Pianne Sewell, Rashawn Slater, Vera Tucker, Christian Derisaw, uh, Tevin Jenkins. All these guys kind of have to come off the board as far as possibilities for our Seahawks. In addition to them, you probably also need to take off um, Sam Cosme of Texas, Alex Leatherwood of Alabama. Um, I believe also Jalen Mayfield out of Michigan. These will be the guys I think selected into that er early part of that second round. If Jenkins, which I think he will with his film, which is really, really good film for a guy that's a muller and also a really good pass blocker kind of as a technician out there. So this kind of gets us down into the list a bit. This doesn't mean that we need to be dismayed that we're getting some horrible potential prospect here. You're still getting a guy with a lot of upside. Just a few questions to their game, a few more questions to their game than the guys picked earlier. But still, some safe guys, some guys with some super upside to them. Let's dive through all these particular cats. And we're going to go ahead and start out, start the board off here with one Liam Eichenberg. Okay, so we're going to start off here with Liam Eichenberg. This is the left tackle for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Oh, well, I got a good game today with the Fighting Irish and the Clemson Bulldogs. Or what are they? Clemson Dogs of some type. I forget what they are. Um, anyway, we've got uh, Liam over here on the left tackle side. We'll, we'll set the stage for you a little bit here. This is, of course, number three ranked Clemson coming into this game. I think only with one loss. Notre Dame at number two. This is the fight, fight, fight for the national title. Not this game, but the game coming up. This is just the ACC championship. So a nice little, uh, nice little test here for these Golden Domers and our Liam. There's not some preeminent rusher here on the other side that's necessarily fantastic for Clemson, but they get a lot of those four or five star type recruits and load them to bear. So it is a test all the way down the line. Now, uh, Liam's also got a little bit of help, so feel free to keep a little bit of an eye. This is Liam right here. Keep it, but feel free to keep an eye on uh, one Mr. Aaron Brooks over here on the other side. And then you've got Robert Hainsey, the right tackle. He's also going to be uh, picked in this draft. All three of those guys will. Now, uh, Liam is the highest of the bunch. He's the guy we're going to look at first and foremost. Uh, and I think what you want to just kind of pay attention to mostly in this particular game is look at him in pass protection. Watch his feet, his ability really to mirror uh, the pass rusher to not give up a lot of ground. He anchors down well. Uh, you can't really knock his hands off of you once he gets his hands on you. He does a lot of things in that respect that are very nice and, and um, a little more advanced as far as alignment than some of the things we sometimes see with some of these left tackles. It'll be more, more athletic, but a little more raw. A guy like James Hudson, who we'll be getting to here after this video. So let's let it play and let you see. Starts out with the first rep with a good bit of pass protection. As you can see there, just locks on his guy well. This is him right here, of course. This one looks like he's done something bad. Um, he has it. I'm going to go back again here real quick on these because I know they kind of played weird. But um, what you're going to see here on, on this one where it looks like he goes bad, this rep right here. Oh, I missed him. What should have happened here, I think, is that Tommy Tremble should have been able to lay his block. You'll see it again here. I think Tremble goes this way and he's supposed to go that way, at least what he's thinking. And he realizes it right after the snap that Tremble doesn't go the way he thinks. So I'm not going to dock him on that one. Uh, again, keep your eyes right here on Mr. Eichenberg. And you can see him just kind of does enough there, does fine. Quarterback held on to the ball a little bit too long. You'll see this on another angle again on the backside. Just good mirror, bang, bang. He knows he's not going to get tested around the arc. He feels just fine about it. Sorry, I might have to hear my cat. She's having some caterwauling moments here. And uh, you can see, again, holds up again. Blitz comes a little late, a little delayed blitz. He's ready for it. Helps out Brooks initially. You can see this here. Helps out Brooks initially on the on this with the guy and then comes out to the delayed blitz. No problem. 
Uh, I would expect that he's probably a guy at the next level who's going to do very good in the blitz game for the most part. Uh, in this game, a little bit near the end, things start to struggle a little bit for him, but um, he is solid in this game as, as far as anything you throw at him, as far as any kind of games you throw at him, he does pretty pretty well with it. Um, not a lot happening here so far. Again, you know, pass for a little, little zone there, a little stunt. A little stunt through. Again, picks it up nice and easy. Just a little more. Ooh, the guy knocks his hands off, recovers well. Just kind of keeps him pushed out the back door of the pocket. Uh, it's not a pretty rep, but he's not a pretty rep kind of guy. He's just a get the job kind of good, just he's get the job done kind of guy. Uh, and that's what you see on these kind of reps, where it's just always it's not going to look great, but it'll get done. Here he's uh, probably a little caught up more with the line. Sometimes you see this a bit on him where his own principles get him stuck a little bit on stuff where he'll help out the guard a little bit too long. You need to get down into that second level, big boy. You're already a little bit slow on the draw. So watch this. You're already a little slow on the draw. You need to be out here. Why are you stuck here? Because watch who shoots in this gap. It's a zone. This is a zone principled run. So in the zone principled run, you're blocking the space, not man. You're, you're, you know, it's good that you're here because that's your, he's in my space, but now that guy's in your space. Get off of him and get over to him. Now he shows an ability to break off one guy there, but that is something that sometimes shows up where he gets caught a little bit inside. It happens there again, where, you know, he's, he just starts, he decides pre-snap, he decides pre-snap, I'm coming down here, I'm coming down here. And I don't know if he thinks he's got help or, or what it is, but this, this blitz then comes in and causes the quarterback to jump where I, you know, maybe he's got it. See, yeah. You know, Bang, they hand off there. Maybe it's a little bit of that. I'll give them a little more of a break on that one where it's, this is a handoff situation and they got to get the running back over here. Really, this is maybe the the call and the quarterback just realizes it's foobar because the running back goes to the middle of the – behind the center instead of over to the left like he should. So uh, I take that back. It's not Eichenberg's fault on that one. He was fine there. Nothing wrong with that. Kind of hangs out a little bit of games. Clemson runs a lot of games in this in this uh, particular matchup. This isn't just a straightforward front four going at the at the Notre Dame uh, offensive line. It's a lot of them kind of playing tricks and doing things different. Not one snap ever being quite the same. Um, again, here when it is that way, when you do is just line them up across the guy and you ask him to block it up. He's pretty good at that. He handles that well. Nice block down. He got, he got pretty good push on that. The running back just kind of ran into where he blocked the guy to. Again, a nice little pin here. I mean, just, I know these are going by fast, so on some of these we'll replay them a little bit, but watch him pin this block down. So we're going to see uh, Tremble come down off the back of this and get into this here, but bang, he comes right down and gets his guy. This opens the hole right up. This guy's doing his job, but then right through here is where the hole goes, and that's where you're going to see the running back run through. Right through. Beep. Nicely done. Nicely done, Liam. He's challenged on a little bit of those reach blocks as far as movement, but he can do them. It's, it's a challenge for him, but he, he does pull it off. Again, comes down, helps out on the defensive tackle, double teams at the point of attack. Just what you see in the zone. Love it. He can do that stuff all day. Him and Brooks were a good pairing with that type of stuff. I think he's okay there. That just was a... Odd call again. A lot of him going downhill here instead of blocking up his guy. So you're you're putting the other guy out on an edge there. Have to pull off a pretty tough block. There we go. Walks his man out. Does just fine there on that point. Not his fault there. That's the rest of the line just didn't really hold up. Tommy Trumbo had a little bit of a problem there off the line. A little slow off the line. All right, another stunt. Picks it up with a blitz. He handles it well. The rest of the line doesn't do as well with it. But he does his part. Pressure doesn't come from his edge. See, bang. Oh, okay. This is where it's coming from. Speed can give him just a little problem. I, I do think there's a little bit of a, I wonder with him on, on guys that really can, can bend that might give him an issue or two at times is he, he just, it's not a matter of he isn't doing the right technique. He's doing everything he should do right to get himself out there. Just as you're seeing with his play, lumber, 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 lumber. He's just not getting into that second level quickly. It's not in his game to get out there. You know, he's he's just not a movement-based tackle. And this is going to come back into play where we start to talk about him as maybe more of a right tackle option in this league. Uh, but then the problem comes into play on that is, does he have the power to do the right tackle stuff? I think he probably does, but... 
we're looking at for us where his, I think, benefit would be if Seattle were to make him the selection in the second round, which is where he should go, is you're talking about a guy that could be the swing tackle at left or right and be a guy who's a prospect, too, with some upside. Here he comes down on the down block again to the defensive tackle. Hard to kind of assess these type of blocks when he's going to get in there with Aaron Brooks. You have two NFL prospects blocking down in a, on a three-tech defensive tackle, turning the three-tech into essentially a, uh, you know, what a one-tech would be. It just, it's, you're, it's not easy on him. Not easy on those defensive tackles in that point. It's a high, high measure of success for both Brooks and Eichenberg there. Again, look at the arc. Everything's clear. The U looks good. Looks like our right guard had a little bit of problem there at the end, but that's not on him. He's he's solid. And through the early part of this game, here you're going to see just mirrors, hand fighting, no problem, fights it off. Everything's easy. Everything's good here. Through the early part of this game, this is what you get to see from him. It's it's, And this is the, why I wanted to choose this particular game to look at him because, again, here, holds up well. This isn't his fault. The quarterback's got to make a choice on where he's going. He's going to... Holding the ball, holding the ball. Okay, now your second read. Now you're back to your first read. Okay, now you're bouncing back around. Like that's on the quarterback there. You can't hold the ball that long. I talk a lot about quarterbacks having the responsibility at times. Uh, again, here, quarterback's just not really having a plan here with the football. But Eichenberg's doing just fine. They picked up that blitz as much as you'd expect. Again, he's holding his man out there. No, for the pressure is coming to the quarterback, but he's doing just fine out there. Again, again, just kind of mark him here. This is you're looking at his left tackle. Look at him. He's got his man way over there. No threat. The guy's trying to come all the way inside underneath the line of scrimmage in order to do something. He kind of pulls inside. Once again, does not he does his bart. It's not his penetration. Watch. He comes inside. Up, 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 gets his man hooked inside there. Allows Brooks to go down to the second level in the zone scheme. That's that's what you're trying to do there. A good handoff there. So he's, he's got smarts. He's got smarts on it. That's he, He's an intelligent left tackle. Um, but does he have the length? Does he, does he have the athleticism? Here he gets a little bit of a bull rush. Does okay with it. The guy doesn't, the guy kind of gets him initially, but he doesn't, he's also a good adjuster. You can catch him off guard and he'll readjust it to it. Won't look pretty off the readjustment, but he will readjust and, and fix it in snap, in play. And so what you odd here is you watch him run. They're running a lot off of the right side, not over his side. Now there he did get beat on the quickness part that I've talked about. Guy got around the edge there and, and out out quicked him. Watch this. Just ooh, what a nasty little spin. Just dropped a nasty spin on him. He wasn't ready for it. He hasn't seen that all game. He hasn't seen that spin move all game. That's free, yes. Now more traditional. It's not his guy causing the sack there. You can see he, again, he holds up well. Some of this is they're just overloading sides and playing games with Notre Dame and really testing that, that line out with their blitzes. And it's they're just they're winning on a couple of these, which does make it a little harder times to test, but it's good to see because this, is, this has got to be his bread and butter to his side. If he's missing blitzes, this is, a, this is kind of a glaring negative at that point because he's got to have it as a positive in his game because of the athletic limitations that I think are a true – part of his game and that are going to maybe hold back some of his top end at the next level to a to a degree. Good block there. More kind of double teaming. Here we go. Get your kick step. Get wide. Nope. Yeah. Neutralize him. Just great job. The guy looks like he might have a step on him there, but he just, he he's staying with his kick, staying with his kick, staying with his kick. And you don't see these guys countering to the inside as of yet in this game. And we're on through the third quarter here. Just keep the kick step, and you can get out to him. You can catch him out there. He's coming from so wide. He's going to take so long to get there. You just got to stay patient with it, and he does that. There's a little bit of that. That's an ugly one right there. This is about the time, I think, where the snaps start to get a little bit of ugly, ugly for a guy. <coughs> All right. Good job there. That just was supposed to be a quick pass. Guy didn't redirect it. Again, he's ready for the pass rush. Overall, That'll work. Move it out that way. Very good. Very good. Well, he's locking out well. He doesn't bad snap. Another game. Another game. Pick it up. Picked it up well. Yeah, that's a pass interference right there. 
He tries to long arm him. I guess the defensive end just tries to long arm, doesn't even get a chance at it, doesn't even whiff it. He will fully neutralize defenders at times. Look at that. Ooh, look at that. That's a little bit of edge there for you. That's a little bit of edge there for you. Watch this guy now. Watch him here as he gets nasty with it. He says, come on. Oh, get down. Oh, you sucker. A little extra, just a little extra there. That's he's got a little bit of that. He's not as he's not as nasty as Creed is. He's not as nasty as David Moore, but he'll give you a little more. Not, he's not Quinn Quinn Miners, but to, he'll give you a little bit of the business from time to time. And here, just good job, round him through the arc. I mean, that's he's this is kind of textbook stuff of what you teach for uh, technique wise. What you want to see in the lineman: feet moving, doesn't get too wide of a base. Doesn't oversell his hands. Doesn't try to push them out there too quickly and let the guy get his hands on him and rip him down. Um, another nice, nice block in there. This is kind of away from him again. Is they really were interested in this game of staying strong side with the run game Notre Dame was. But you see him on his side. You know, yeah, it's not to his side, but he's doing fine. If the guy wanted to go to this hole, he could have gone that hole. He chose the backside hole, and good for him. But uh, you know, our guy was there. He was ready to hold up. Um, there again, you see him in space a little bit, not great. Another game, they run a little stunt, handles it fine. Another stunt, no problem. A lot of stunts here as they go on to Clemson. But they're up 34-10, so it's hard to knock whatever they're doing from a strategy standpoint. And they've definitely got this quarterback rattled a little bit from a timing standpoint. So you see, we're two, two minutes, 24 seconds, and the tape was actually not as bad as I thought when I initially was watching this, but he's doing fine. He, he is, uh, he's holding up well here. Quarterback's just completely out of his, out of his gun at this point. No problem. Finally going to let one go. And we're pretty much at the end of this one. So a solid bit of tape here. I think you get a little bit of a good feel and idea for him. Uh, and why he's considered a good prospect. We'll switch this off here to the uh, closing uh, closing thoughts. An often misused cliched phrase as it applies to potential prospects is he's going to have a high floor. Of course, this means that a guy is going to have a very good chance of getting the NFL and at least being uh, a league average player for you, a guy who should play some years in this league and do a decent job at it, as opposed to some of those prospects that you'll point to and say, oh, his his ceiling is through the roof. You know, his his potential is outer space. You know, so you want to be that guy. You want to grab those kind of prospects. But there's a certain amount of value to grabbing the guy that is the, the certainty because those outer space guys, those through the roof guys, those are also the guys that can tend to be a little bit more bust heavy. Whereas your high floor guys, it's built within the phrase itself, tend to be more of those safe players. And while you might not like that phrase per chance, uh, who's ever watching this, I know there's some scouts who don't like it. I don't think they're watching this, but um, it is still one that I think does apply. When the Seahawks got Puna Ford as an unrestricted free agent out of college, he wasn't drafted. Why wasn't he drafted? Because he was six feet tall and he was a one tech. A six foot tall, 300 pound one tech is hard to see in this league. General managers go, um, how's that going to work? And so he fell, but many out there, many scouts, Many, uh, you know, the the going word out there, the rumors out there was that this was going to be a guy who was going to play in this league for 10 years. You got yourself a guy should be a 10-year starter in this league. And yeah, one tech is maybe the least important position of uh, all the other down linemen in a 4-3, but it does have value. And a guy, and knowing he's going to play at least at a league average to a little bit above league average level for a, for a five, six, seven, eight-year period has value within it. Liam Eikenberg is this type of cat. He's a guy who should come in, in my opinion, give you at least five to six, seven years of decent left tackle to at the very minimum right tackle play, and he'll be a good guy right out the gate for you. You're not going to have to wait a long period of time to tap into his full potential. The unfortunate side of that may be that there's not a lot of full potential to tap into. I think athletically, it's not great. And for those that are going to run a zone scheme like Seattle, it's going to be a little bit tougher for him. I think he would benefit best on being in more of a man-on-man -man scheme. And most teams are going to run certain zone 
tenants within them. And he can do those tenants. It's not that it's not a lack of will or understanding. He's got the smarts and, and the know-how to get it done. It's just a matter of it coming down to you're starting at point A, you need to get to point B, but you get to point B at such a slow rate that linebacker C <laughs> has gotten around you and he's far gone. He's already out the back door and he's left and he's not even left a tip. So that's where with him, I, I would have some trepidation about Seattle selecting him in the second round where I think he'll go. There's a lot of teams I think that will find enough value in taking a guy like that in the second round to go, we don't have to worry about him. He's not going to come in and we're going to go, dear God, what have we drafted? He's got so far to go. He's going to come in. He's a plug and play player. You can put him at the right side. You can put him at the left side. He can probably function at both. That's got value in it. But from my standpoint on it, I would like for Seattle to go in a different direction. Probably would look for them to maybe go a little bit more potential especially when you look at a, a position like the left tackle position, for instance, where you can afford to go get a guy who maybe has a year that he can kind of sit around to get himself up to speed. You're a year out from Brandon Shell going to free agency. You're a year out from probably seeing um, Dwayne Brown retire. So this gives him a year to kind of get up to speed. If you have an injury, he's there to fill in uh, slash take over a little earlier at that point. But it takes a little bit of the pressure off. It builds up a little bit of depth. It gets you a little bit of the, the potential for the future of maybe having a somewhat of a star at the position as we've had here with Dwayne Brown, as opposed to just having a guy that's league average solid. Just he'll do a decent enough job. He'll, he'll get it enough done. Still, Liam's a good pick. Should still probably go at no later than I would say in the third round, but probably some team left tackle hungry, right tackle team hungry is going to probably end up grabbing in the mid to second round, late mid to late second round.